Hi, I'm Scott Snowden. Um, just give you a little bit of a history as far as uh, where I've come as far as the journey of uh, hair loss. It started when I was about age 26. I went from having a full thick head of hair to the point where I used to ask the hairdresser to actually thin it out a bit because it wasn't quite manageable. And it's one of those scenarios, you know, uh, careful what you wish for. Within a two year period, uh, I'd say about 80% of my hair loss took place, uh, which I couldn't quite uh, digest. I uh, wasn't mentally or uh, emotionally mature enough to accept that. So I actually went and sold my car I had at the time to invest in a hair transplant. People asked me if I was crazy and I said, well, let's put it to you this way. I'd rather uh, take the bus with a full head of hair as opposed to driving my car without any hair. So that's the way I viewed it. So that was the importance I gave it. You will get people with opinions, particularly people who don't suffer from hair loss will usually have you know, all kinds of opinions of don't worry about it and give you examples of Sean Connery and, and all the you know, famous actors who suit it. Um, and whether you suit it or you don't or you have a good shaped head or not, you just know that you like to have a choice. And that's what it's really about. It's having the choice to shave your head or not to. And if you're going to shave your head, you want it to appear as though you have hair which is perfectly fine, you know, and regardless of what anyone thinks about the expense, it's simply about how you feel about it. Moving forward, uh, the hair loss continued. I depleted all my transplant donor hair and I was left with quite a large area on my crown that was balding significantly. So overall, I was trying to make do, but was by no means satisfied or content with it. So at that point, I started uh, feeling a little bit of a dent in my confidence and uh, the, the profession I'm in, I am a health coach. So I actually help people with their confidence and varying kinds of issues, whether it's nutrition or what have you. So I felt almost like a little bit of a hypocrite because part of me was lacking in confidence, but I didn't have any control over it. So that told me that all that you know, journey I'd gone through with hair transplants at the end of the day resulted in the same thing, wearing a hat. Out of the four or five that I'd visited uh, in the north, not to be disrespectful to them, but they look very Mickey Mouse. They look very, very much smaller and less professional than what their website led you to believe. I then sat with a couple of their practitioners or their consultants, and that further, uh, I guess, convinced me of what I'd seen was a good representation of what was going to be offered. A lot of it was window dressing and which instantly turned me off, especially after having gone down the road that I've gone through and the different amounts of pain and expense and what have you, I wasn't willing to take this lightly. And I was beginning to think with my first few impressions that this seems a little bit, you know, kind of backstreet kind of work or like a tattoo parlor. And I've got a couple of tattoos and a couple of the places I went in were look like downgrades from the places I got my tattoos. So that's kind of the impression I had. I decided, okay, well, I'm just gonna check this Brandwood place. It was actually narrowed down between Brandwood and a place in New York. And like I said, I was willing to travel you know, nearly 4,000 miles to do this. So once I got in here, uh, all those concerns and reservations were completely put, put to rest. Uh, I relaxed. Precisely what I'd been looking for is like, when I first walked into the place, the thing that struck me right away is it was all a very secure environment, very clinical looking, which, you may say, okay, well, this is not a medical procedure, but it feels like that to the client coming in because it's a permanent cosmetic procedure, which is going to be on your head at the end of the day. And it's going to matter that it mattered enough to, to pay the money. It mattered enough to do something about it. I explained what I was looking for. And the first thing Paul did, which I thought was exceptional was he set realistic expectations. He actually did the ideal thing is he under promised and over delivered which is what we always want. We always want to be pleasantly surprised, not unpleasantly surprised. So he explained what he could do. I also explained to him that the other places I'd spoken to had told me that the only thing that you do with SMP is you, you, you have to accept for the rest of your life, you have your head shaved down to grade zero. So basically a shaved head. Uh, that did not please me with the other places simply because I know that if somebody has the artistic ability and with the amount of hair that I did have on my head, I felt deep down inside something could be done to camouflage that and I wasn't willing to throw away all the work that had been done in the past just because it was incomplete. So Paul took a look at it and he said he could definitely do something. I looked him in the eye. He had complete conviction in his words. Uh, he did say to me, 
yeah, we're going to do your whole head. He said, I want you to know that where you have your scar, it's not going to be 100% gone. He said it could be anywhere from 60 to 100. But even 50% gone was good enough for me. We've gone far beyond that, in my opinion. It looks very natural. Uh, my mom, she came and had a look and she was completely blown away. She said, geez, if only you'd known about this prior to going through hair transplants. And I said, well, it's good information to have after the fact. But the point is, is yeah, she's probably right. Um, and yeah, anyone that's looked has been like, wow, it's and to the point where within a week, anyone that used to in my family would kind of sympathize and say, oh, you know, it's a shame that, that you have the hair loss. Um, they were like, geez, it's almost like we've forgotten who ever had it. They, they adapted that quickly that it's not even in their mind anymore to acknowledge it, which is the best result you can possibly get because it's not like people say, oh yeah, I remember when it was this way. They, it almost erases it was that way in the first place and simply becomes the norm that you don't suffer from hair loss. And that's, that's the nice thing about this as well is it's an instant result. There's no growth period waiting for it to grow in and what have you. It's simply, you walk in one way, you walk out the opposite when you're, when you're coming out the door and you feel a little bit sore and then within 24 hours, it's like you haven't even been in there except for the great result. It, whether you've been through hair transplants, so that's in one way it can make you more apprehensive because almost nine times out of 10 when you've had a hair transplant for at least an extensive hair loss, you will be left with a scar. Um, you may feel it's no big deal at the time, but eventually when the hair loss continues, the natural thing to do is keep your hair shorter. And the minute you try to do that, you're cornered because then you have to reveal the scar. So then you start feeling a bit trapped between haircuts. You're not really sure what way to go. Do you show the scar or do you accentuate the balding? One way or another, you're losing something. No pun intended. The other thing here as well is when you've been through hair transplants and have the scar, you also feel, you know, once bit and twice shy. You feel that although it may have felt successful at one time, you're now quite a bit more apprehensive and you start to become dejected about the whole process. So you start to feel like you want to give up. My advice to you is you don't have to give up. You don't have to concede defeat here. Um, and you don't even have to view it as a battle. It's simply a transition and there are alternatives. The alternative I found here, uh, I can say hands down, uh, whether you've had hair transplants or you haven't had any whatsoever, whether it's a little bit of hair loss or extensive hair loss, I can guarantee you, hands down, you can hold me to that, you will not be disappointed with this. The, the result is second to none and uh, I really truly wish I'd uh, come across this a few years ago.